to do today. Hey, Brady. Welcome back to Music City Bricks. Hey, Tim. Welcome back. Hello, Stosh. Welcome to the channel. How you doing? Doing great. Hey, tell me about your shop. So this is Music City Bricks. Okay. Uh, we've been here just under a year, and uh, we're growing pretty fast, uh, very well accepted in the community, and we try to run it more like a community clubhouse than a store. And so the, okay. the retail aspect of it basically pays the rent for our clubhouse. So, there you go. So and I did notice that, and you know, it's buy, sell, trade, and learn. Right. What sets you apart? I think the community aspect. So we, okay. we probably went to about 30 different stores like this all around the country as part of our research for how we wanted this store to work. Uh, everywhere from Bricks and Wheels out in Seattle to Bucks County Brick Shop up in Pennsylvania okay. to Bricks and Minifigs down in Florida. Right. Uh, we were, we've been all over the place. They all seem to have certain things in common, you know, the bulk tubs, the right. parts, the minifigs. But I never really felt, there was always a little bit of a layer of community there. But it didn't really run deep, I felt. Okay. You know, people came in there, but maybe they didn't recognize each other. To the channel, how you doing? Good, nice to meet you, sir. Hey, could you tell me a little bit about the club that you guys are involved with and the membership program and sure. the club group? Yeah, I'm part of the Tennessee Valley Lego Club. Okay. It's here in Nashville, has three chapters. Okay. Nashville, Huntsville, and Knoxville. So it's a great community for okay. young and old to come together and learn and have that great community of learning, of sharing, of challenging each other with builds and contests and things like that. But it's all about that love of Lego. Now, how long have you been involved with the Lego group? About a year and a half now. I'm an architectural photographer by trade. Okay. And so I love taking pictures of buildings and then lately replicating those. Obviously, Lego was the fun piece because I could not only photograph these great buildings, but actually make replicas of them. Awesome. And give them to clients or get commissions for them. So it's a lot of fun. You learn a little bit about architecture and structure and how things are built. Right. And it just kind of feeds your love of architecture. That's great. I noticed there's a little bit something different about this shop. Yes. Buy, sell, trade, and learn. Yes. So. Music City Bricks is just a new place. It's, I love it because here, because they're a family owned business. The kids are really awesome Zeke and Anna Marie and poor Stosh and Melinda. They really foster this great community okay. because they make you feel welcome. You know, again, it's and about, I, I sensed that right when I walked in. So. Yeah, it's all about that community. You're welcome to stay and build and learn. And the other day, I was in here wanting to learn about how to motorize things. Okay, as you get your skill sets up, and Stash took the time to you know go out and get the parts and show us little techniques and things like that. We're laughing about it. it's kind of like. A, I had an old neighbor one time as a mechanic. Of course, he's sitting in the shade, and he'll you crawl up in the car and see that little pin, pull that out, and that's just how you change your brakes. So it's the same kind of thing here. Right. They just have a real passion for Lego, and it's great to see this. Not only a shop that has great parts, but just a, kind of like a little museum. Right. And the knowledge and the friendliness, but it's such a family-based business. You know, it's such a great gem. Right. Okay. Music City Bricks is just a great asset. On the learning aspect, we've got clubs that are coming in. Yeah. What is your group? We meet uh, pretty much on a monthly basis, I think four times a year is a business kind of thing, but all throughout the month, there's all kinds of engagements, whether it be a, a show or just a Lego get together, some things like that. Are you planning on doing any shows? And if you are, are you setting up any? I am. I'm. Going to my first show, well, actually, as a exhibitor, I went to the first show, and that's where it fueled my love for Lego with these three artists there. And uh, so I'm actually going to exhibit for my skyscrapers I'm building at the Alabama Brick Fair in Birmingham in January, I think January 13th to the 16th. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about that, and a uh, great, great chance to meet people and see what people are building. And again, just something about Lego, that community. It's just a really fascinating thing. It you truly can, is. You can jump in anytime you want, whether it be young or old. That's why I love coming here and seeing these young kids really right. build stuff here. And that their mom and dad foster that. Not only for them, but for the community at large. So, so I'm Zeke, and I work at Music City Bricks. And I help out with a lot of things. I build minifigs, small cars, basically a lot of things. Um... And I like playing with Lego. 
Hello, I am Emery, and I am the co-owner of Music City Bricks, uh, and I am currently building a tiger with instructions, and uh, it's going to be a giant statue, and I named it Asparagus. Hello, I'm Melinda Marinci, and I'm one of the co-owners of Music City Bricks. I basically got into Lego when I was a small child. My mom and dad bought me some castles and some space Lego. And then once I got older, kind of got out of Lego. But then once I met Stosh, got back into Lego again. And so here I, I actually actively kind of learn people's names. I introduce them to each other. I'm like, hey, he's a Star Wars guy. You're a Star Wars guy. Hey, everybody. I'm Patrick from Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, my last name is Durham, but the fun name, the fun name is the thing I love most about Lego, and my Lego name is Lego Jedi, because I'm a Star Wars guy. So I love building Star Wars or anything out of Lego, but some of the stuff that I do more than anything is great big giant dioramas, like Planet Mustafar from Episode 3. You know, that's the one with all the volcano and lava where Obi-Wan and Anakin had their final duel. But that's the stuff of legend. The thing I build is what's going on on Mustafar today. And it's a whole new adventure. The dark side clouds everything, and the Sith will rise again. But it seems like the Sith just can't seem to remember that they always lose. One of my favorite characters of all time in the Star Wars movies is Han Solo. So they made a movie called Solo, and there was this one point where it was a snow-covered planet, and these crooks, along with Han Solo, were going to do a train heist of the convex transport. Anyway, so my current diorama is, uh, is that section of Vandor 1 from the Solo movie that uh, features the convex train. Now, I'm at a place called Music City Bricks, which is a little over 200 miles away from where I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, but I come here often because my friend Stosh owns this place, and when I was building Mustafar and scrambling nervously to have enough black bricks, he helped me when he first opened get a good chunk of what I needed to get further along on that build. So, you know, I claim, although I must admit that I didn't count all of it, it has 110,723 pieces. I'm not sure if that's correct but that's what it says on the video. That's some of the fun that I have. I've only been actively building with Lego as an adult since December of 2017, when I gave myself the neat little Lego version of BB-8 for Christmas. And BB-8 has stayed with me ever since then. It's that Han Solo line, move ball. Move, move, it won't go away. Uh, Anyway, you can tell that I have lots of fun. As far as Music City Bricks, I cannot say enough about it. When I am in this area, it is an absolutely must stop if all I do is walk in the door and say, Hi, Stosh, how you doing? That's about it. I have a group of friends that also comes over from Knoxville, Tennessee that build with me, and we have a great big time. Sure. Hey, didn't you guys both work at Toys R Us? You know, right. You learn about them and then introduce them to each other. And now I've got people coming in where they have met here and they're hanging out outside of our place, but then they're also okay. meeting up here. So just last weekend, Friday night, we got a little thing we do where Friday and Saturday nights are open until 9. However, I'll stay as late as they want, as long okay. as they in by 9. And so I had four college guys come in and decided to build a really cool mock while they were here. And they drew it up on paper at like 9 p.m. And around 5 or 6 in the morning, they rolled out of here with a Completely built. Oh, wow. From concept all the way to fully built with the four of them just digging through the tubs and building it. Well, how did you get involved in Lego? So, when I was, I think, in the fifth grade, I got a Lego set, a Technic set. Okay. Um, I don't even remember if it was for a special occasion, uh, but I got one and my, my sister got one. And then later, I think, in ninth grade or so, she gave me her. So then I had two Lego sets. So I doubled my collection. There you go. I had a couple of little odd end, like used right. secondhand things that people gave me, like the, the 1978 police boat. I've got that okay. still. It, um, I'm not sure if I chewed on it or the dog, but it's got some teeth marks. Somebody stuff. chewed <laughs> on it. Somebody chewed on it, but I've still got it. And so um, so I've always liked Lego. And when I got into high school and started working on my own, had money, I kind of you know, dabbled in pirates and things like that, but never got a lot of Lego. And then college, I got into the Mindstorms when it came out. Right. Just always liked Lego. It's always been there, but I've never gone like full bore into it. 
And then when the kids came along, it kind of was an easy excuse to get into it deeper. Oh, yeah. Now you got and an then, excuse to buy yeah. it. <laughs> and so uh, we finally got my wife on board a few years ago. Okay. She had more money, more uh, Lego than me growing up, but she didn't stay in it. And so we got her drawn back in about it. So she uh, went through the dark time as well. She did, yeah. I guess about three years ago, we got her sucked back in with the, uh, the orange Porsche 911. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's a good set. Yeah, I bought it for her for her birthday, and I, I gave it to her, and she's like, is this for you or for me? And I was like, for you, of course. But I was hoping she'd like have me build it for her, because right. it's a big Technic set. She called my bluff and built it herself. And good so, deal. So I feel like we lost the battle, because now she does all the big Technic sets that I don't get to do, but I feel like right. we won the war, because you know we get to build this huge, cool place set our now, own Lego clubhouse. Right. My wife will not do it. But she'll sort all day long. But you know, she's out that's the, the best. That's right the best. <laughs> that's the best ever because uh, you got a sorter without her right. also competing for the parts. Yeah. So I just tell her what I need, and sometimes I'll bring a sample piece with me. Said I need, I need this part right here. Right. And she'll dig through and just have at it. What's your favorite thing? Uh, it'd have to be Technic. Yeah, I love particularly Mindstorms. Uh, my favorite set of all times is the Mindstorm set. Because to me, you know, you've got the creator three in ones, you got the two in ones, right? But a mindstorm, a mindstorm set's like a hundred in one. There you, you go. Know? So it's like, sure, you pay three fifty for it, but if it's a hundred sets. That's only three dollars a set. <laughs> you know, it's like three to four dollars a set. So, what is the square footage of your shop? I can't rattle it off. I think it's like thirty five hundred square feet. I've got dreams of like fourteen thousand square feet. My hope is to like just keep expanding in the plaza. What's your biggest catastrophe? What's your biggest drop? We're pretty risk averse, like the way we operate. Okay. Uh, we we're always think so. Even my kids, they work here just as much as I do, and we have sorted millions of parts. You know, we've got over three point six right. million parts just in our Brooklyn inventory, which kind of keeps us in the top ten in the U.S. Right. And they have helped with that continuously. So we have a very we're very vested in uh, the parts, the accuracy of the parts. If we spill parts on the floor, you know, and they were new, they're not used. That devaluing deeply registered in our brain. So we're very Careful not to spill a tub of Lego, but I mean Lego gets dropped, it gets spilled, right. but I guess uh, we don't sweat it too much because at that point it's done. What's the age group that you see mostly in the shop? We seem to mostly land between three and eighty-three. There you go. <laughs> like it, I haven't seen. I mean, we get newborns in here uh, pretty regularly as well, but they tend to just stay in their bassinets. <laughs> there you but go. But the uh, but yeah, we go up to. Uh, up to 83, pretty common. I mean, there's a guy out there digging on the ball right now that I'm pretty sure he's in his 60s. So. In his 60s. Yeah. That's so, awesome. uh, yeah, we don't, I don't feel like we have like a really tight demographic of this is our customer that I would say it's only in that age range. Okay. There's definitely a spike of, you know, that uh, seven to 11 year old boys. I mean, there's clearly a, there's a spike right. there. And there's a spike of kind of college age boys, but uh, we, we cover the gamut. Men, women, boys, girls, we get them all in here pretty, pretty steady. Okay. Any certain sets out there that you absolutely hated to build but love the finished product? I don't know. I'm a parts guy. I'm not okay. a sets guy. So as you as you walk around the store, you'll you'll definitely see that that clearly this guy likes parts and not sets because it's mostly parts that are here. Okay. To me, every set is just a box of parts that needs to be sorted. They need to be sorted out. <laughs> That's it's, awesome. It's not sorted yet. So I don't I don't tend to hate on sets. Like okay. when sets go on clearance, I don't care if it's um, Unikitty or if it was Bionicle or who it is. You know, there's there's themes that I feel like get hated on over the years. Right. I mean, so there was a guy in here talking about Zanap the other day. Okay. It's like, I had a Z Zanap <laughs> set, if that's even how it's pronounced. Right. Um, but, I mean, I'm... The parts are parts to me. So we don't go to shows to set up okay. um, because the community aspect is such a heavy aspect of what we do. Right. I can't bottle that and sell it out of a booth. You know, we sell minifigs and that, like, you okay. see it a lot of shows. You see the booths, which tons of minifigs, animals. Occasionally people will bring bulk to shows, but that's not my thing. If I wanted to work retail, I wouldn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, why would anyone want to work retail on purpose? Right. To me, I'm building community in a way that is funding the clubhouse where we can have community. But we okay. do go and we take play value to shows, like when the Tennessee State Fair is at the Wilson County Fairground. We will go, they'll give us a space as big as our retail area. Right. And we will spread out like the biggest Duplo train layout you've probably seen. Okay. And we'll be there from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And at any given time, there'll be a dozen kids playing on it. Okay. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. They don't pay us and we don't pay them. It's just something, just, just a, a way to, to exist in the community and 
So if you ever see us at a show, that's probably what we'll be doing is, is, is providing play value. Well, thanks for visiting us at Music City Bricks, guys. We are also on the web, www.musiccitybricks.com. You can call us at 615-965-6551. You can find us on Bricklink, Music City Bricks. Uh, you can find us on Facebook as well. And if you want to drive over here, we are at 41 Business Park Drive, Lebanon, Tennessee, 37090. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, be sure and check out the other great content that we have. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that little bell. See you guys later.